Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of marine polychaete worms. And it's July 1st, so happy International Polychaete Worm Day. Yeah, it's really a thing. I know, your first instinct might be ew, gross, or creepy, but I encourage you to spend a few minutes with me and get to know these pretty amazing underwater Pacific Northwest neighbors. By the end, I hope you might appreciate them for their beauty and strangeness, even just a little bit. Marine polychaetes are a pretty diverse bunch. Their segmented bodies and many bristled appendages are what they have in common. But those forms are so varied, it is astonishing they are all grouped together. Some make their homes in tubes, like the bamboo tube worms from episode one, or these northern feather duster tube worms. Northern feather dusters are super fancy, with their parchment homes and feathery feeding and breathing appendages that make them look like blooming flowers underwater. Another tube-dwelling polychaete is the basket tube worm. Unlike the showy feather dusters, they don't like to draw attention to themselves. They blend into their rocky habitat so hard that it is easy to overlook them. They build a protective basket over the top of their tube homes that they can stick their feeding tentacles out of when they are hungry. I found this one once with its basket splayed open and its tentacles moving around. It was the first time I had ever gotten a glimpse of what the worm inside of this home might look like, and it was super cool. Some polychaetes, like the spaghetti tube worm, make less permanent, more delicate homes out of sand. You can see their bristly cati here. They look kind of fierce, and their head of oozy spaghetti-like feeding tentacles. Not all marine polychaetes build fancy homes. Some make their homes on the bodies of other animals. The red-banded commensal scale worm can be found living on sea stars and chitons. These worms don't harm their hosts. They are just freeloaders taking advantage of shelter and the occasional bits of food their host may have missed. Other scale worms can be found with regularity in the rocky intertidal zone, living happily on their own, chowing down on other worms. Scale worms can shed their scales if they feel threatened, and they have the ability to grow them back in a mere five days' time. Look at this crazy worm. This is a necklace worm I found in downtown Seattle. Probably one of my favorite finds of this year so far. It was super tiny, maybe a quarter of an inch long. My macro lens really helped me to see its delicate, bristly appendages. Isn't it beautiful? This worm was another one of my favorite discoveries this year. This is a white banded bobbit worm and I found it on San Juan Island. I mean, come on, how can you not be completely smitten with this iridescent rainbow glamour worm? Those flexible red appendages you see are the gills. One family of marine polychaetes is known as the sea nymphs or Nerididae, named after Nereus, a sea god who fathered numerous sea nymph daughters. The sea nymphs are beautiful and can be huge, up to one and a half feet long. Their reproductive strategy is complicated, involving lunar cycles, seasons, temperature, day length, light intensity, and salinity. When they are ready to spawn, they undergo metamorphosis. They develop swimming feet and enlarged eyes. Their bodies become swollen with eggs and sperm, and they will swim to the surface to dance the night away, to release their gametes into the wild. This photo shows a transformed sea nymph called an epitoki. You can see the distinction between the two halves of the body, one with the paddle-like swimming feet. Oh, and here's what their eggs look like. After spawning events, you are likely to find these weird gelatinous egg masses high up in the intertidal zone. And here is one that got snared by an aggregating anemone. Sorry, friend, but everybody's got to eat. When you head out to low tide, don't forget to look for marine polychaete worms. I guarantee, even if you still think ew, you will appreciate them a little more for their coolness.